Hi, I'm Matt from Howtech, and today we're going to take a look at flex fuel sensors, when you might need one, and how to install and set one up on a Howtech Elite Series ECU. It's no secret that ethanol based fuels are becoming more and more popular with performance enthusiasts, and for good reason. Ethanol has a high octane rating, it's affordable, it's renewable, and it's clean burning. On a high performance engine, Burning ethanol as a fuel often allows us to run higher compression ratios, add more boost and increase ignition timing, all of which can help us achieve our ultimate goal of making more horsepower safely and ultimately turning on that wind light at the end of the track. What is ethanol and how is it different from gasoline as a fuel? This one all comes down to chemistry. The chemical composition of ethanol is quite different to that of gasoline based fuels and as a result of this, the volume of fuel required by an engine running on ethanol is about 35% greater than that of regular gasoline fuels. This presents a bit of a challenge because we've got this new clean, safe, powerful fuel available to us as performance enthusiasts. You can even purchase it at the pump at many locations, but it requires the fuel delivery system to be recalibrated to deliver roughly 35% more fuel for it to work properly. In the old days, when we had carburetors, this would be a really big issue because it would mean that we'd have to rejet the carb completely for this fuel type. And once that was done, we couldn't go back to gasoline without rejetting the carb all over again. Now with EFI, however, we can use a sensor like this guy here. This is a Howtech Flex fuel sensor. And when installed into the fuel line, it can measure the actual percentage content of ethanol in the fuel. So if you had half a tank of gasoline in the tank, and you top that tank up with 100% ethanol, then mixed it all around, you'd end up with a mixture of 50% ethanol and 50% gasoline. This sensor here is able to read this 50-50 mix and feed that information into the ECU, which can in turn be tuned precisely to deliver the right amount of fuel for the particular mixture of gasoline and ethanol in the fuel line. Or in carb speak, it's like rejetting the carb continually based on the actual amount of ethanol in the fuel line. Typically, we install this flex fuel sensor in the fuel return line. I'll come back to some of the limitations of this in a moment, but for now, let's just agree that this is the simplest and most practical place to install the sensor. Now, following the wiring guide that comes with the sensor, we wire up 12 volts, the signal wire, and the sensor ground to the ECU wiring harness. Because flex fuel sensors are a frequency based sensor, this signal needs to be wired to a digital pulsed input, or a DPI, on the ECU. With the sensor installed, let's take a look at how to set up the ECU to read and use a flex fuel sensor. The first thing to do is to go up into the Setup menu and click on Main Setup. Go into the Functions tab. I find the easiest way to navigate this page is to just go to the search bar at the bottom and start typing. I'll type Flex. Notice there's two types of flex fuel sensors commonly available. Howtech sensor allows you to read both the ethanol content and the fuel temperature from the same sensor, so we click on flex fuel composition slash temperature sensor. When we enable this function, you can see the software prompts us to select which input we're going to wire the sensor to. In this case, we've got SPIs 1 through 4 available, so I'll select any one of these. Now the ECU knows which wire to look for the flex fuel signal on. To use both ethanol content and fuel temperature functions, I need to select the edge to a rising. Now the next thing I'll do is load the latest sensor calibration for both temperature and ethanol content by clicking on the load calibration tab. That's the one that looks like the little folder. Starting with the ethanol content calibration, I select fuel composition, digital, Haltech calibration. Now next for temperature, I'll scroll right down the bottom to the calibration named Temperature Digital Fuel Composition Haltech. And that's it. My flex fuel sensor is set up and ready to use. Now there is one more setting that I didn't mention, and that's this sampling threshold. Remember how I said earlier that the easiest place to install the flex fuel sensors in the fuel return line? Well, there is a limitation to this, because often in performance applications, we run into the limits of the fuel pump to supply enough fuel. What happens here is there's no fuel in the return line at all, and so the sensor in that case can give some really funny readings. 
that's where this sampling threshold setting can be used. So working on the theory that once fuel is in the tank and the engine has been run for a minute or two, the ethanol content is fairly consistent until it's refilled again. We can then tell the ECU stop sampling the ethanol content above a predefined load and RPM to prevent these incorrect sensor readings that are being caused by lack of fuel in the return line. So once the sensor's been set up in the main setup page, we're ready to start working on the fuel and ignition calibrations to ensure that the ECU delivers the desired amount of fuel for the actual content of ethanol in the fuel line. The simplest way of achieving this is to go into the main setup window and click on the fuel tab. Here, select the fuel type to flex fuel. This tells the ECU to look out for a flex fuel sensor and automatically calculate the additional amount of fuel required for the engine to meet the target air fuel ratio. Now this is where it gets a little bit interesting. We know from the chemistry of the fuel type what the chemically, mathematically correct amount of additional fuel we need to add is, but what we find in the real world is that just adding the mathematically correct amount of additional fuel to the engine doesn't actually work out. The actual air fuel ratio measured from the lambda sensor in the exhaust tells us it's all out by a couple of percent. Now, there's a few reasons for this, but the biggest factor is the cooling effect that ethanol has on the incoming intake air. This is actually one of the big advantages of using ethanol as a race fuel. It cools the intake charge and it helps prevent detonation, which means we can run more boost or higher compression. Nonetheless, this nonlinearity between theory and real world application means the ECU needs a way to correct for that difference between what should happen according to theory and what actually happens in the real world. So when flex fuel is selected as a fuel type, you'll notice there's this additional fuel scalar table in the fuel maps. This fuel scalar table allows the tuner to correct the actual amount of additional fuel delivered versus the theoretical additional fuel that would be required for that specific ethanol content percentage. The base map numbers that Howtech have in this map are the result of real world testing on a number of high performance turbo engines. And for most forced induction applications, they can be relied upon. Well, that's the basics of it. How to set up flex fuel sensor in eight minutes or less using the Elite Series ECU. Follow these steps and your engine will run the same regardless of how much ethanol you have in your fuel supply. You didn't come here just for the basics, did you? You didn't add ethanol to your engine just to run it the same as you always have. You really want to run more boost, you want more timing, and you want to make a bunch more horsepower when you can get your hands on this wonderful corn burning octane of the gods. So like any function in the Elite Series ECU, now the ECU knows the percentage of ethanol in the fuel, you can use that data to control other functions. So let's take a look first at the ignition, and then we'll look at boost as well. So let's go back to the main setup page and click on the ignition tab. Notice here you can turn on a correction for fuel composition correction. This in turn gives you two more maps in the ignition tables. There is the same familiar flex fuel scalar table again, and another table called the flex fuel correction table. So let's first focus on the flex fuel correction table. This is the amount of additional timing that you're adding over and above the base ignition map when you've got 100% ethanol, or more realistic, E98 or even E85. Once we've optimized this map for all load and RPM points on 100% ethanol, we don't need to remap the entire engine at every 10% change in ethanol content. You could do that if you wanted to using 4D mapping, but personally, I think that's making things hard for yourself. Rather than that, we go into the flex fuel scalar table, and this map allows an ignition correction percentage versus ethanol content based on that 100% ethanol ignition increase timing map. So if we had, say, 20 degrees of ignition timing in the base ignition timing map, that's the no ethanol tune, and six degrees of timing in the flex fuel correction map, then this scalar map calculates the percentage of the additional six degrees of timing to add based on the percentage of ethanol content in the fuel. It's no secret that E85 allows us to safely run more boost in an engine. So it makes sense that we may want to have our target boost increase with ethanol content. Or maybe the other way of looking at it is we may want to reduce the amount of boost we're making if we can't get E85. Either way, setting up boost by ethanol content is as simple as going to the boost control function again by pressing F4 
finding boost control and clicking on the corrections tab to turn on flex fuel composition correction. Now when I go into my boost control maps, I've got a new table under the corrections heading of flex fuel. This has a map axis based on the percentage of ethanol content in the fuel and gives me the ability to add more boost with ethanol content. These tables boost additional to whatever value I've got in my regular boost control table. Because Haltech Elite Series ECUs have flexible map axes, and now the ECU knows the ethanol content, you can use this information to map any number of additional corrections. So for example, I know from experience that running engines on E85 require more fuel on startup when they're cold. That's because ethanol has a higher fuel distillation temperature than gasoline. So something I might want to do is go into both my fuel prime pulse and my cranking correction maps and add flex fuel percentage as an access to these maps. Now before you go, there's a couple of gotchas to look out for. There's a few common mistakes that we see people making that I really want to point out just so you don't fall into this trap as well. The first one is turning on the flex fuel composition correction table in the fuel corrections if you've set the fuel type for flex fuel. Typically, you don't want to use this map. This map is only used when the fuel type is set to petrol. See, this map exists so our existing Sport Series ECU customers could import their Sport Series ECU maps directly into an Elite Series ECU. Turning on this map with the fuel type set to flex fuel will give you a double correction. Well, that's all we've got time for today. If you've got any further questions, type them in the comment below and we'll get back to you. Otherwise, you can always send us an email, support at I'm Matt from Haltech and we'll see you next time.